two things regarding like the noise. Yep. One of them is, so for example, like yesterday, guys, please check out the call with AI2. I think it should be posted somewhere on our YouTube channel. So uh, we have, I think most of us, and again, within Corona Y or outside, I saw everybody who was doing something with coordinating data set, everybody assumed that this is like a good data set, you know, to do something. But in reality, that was my conundrum for after like submission round one. If you look at task risks, I mean, all of our vertical teams, they were all doing filtering after, you know, just kind of like out of 40,000 plus papers, they were down to like 800, 400, depends whatever, you know, risk factor is or specific term they were like trying to nail down from the papers. So yesterday we got this confirmation that AI2, the way they create COVID-19, it's like, it's like Wikipedia, but not Wikipedia for coronavirus, Wikipedia. It's like, yeah, we, we have the knowledge of, of humanity, but it's, if you want to build like a bird for like physics or something, you don't train it on the whole Wikipedia, right? Yep. You train it. So in a sense, what we're doing as a like machine learning intelligence system, uh, we take all that COVID-19, like the whole Wikipedia, train our embeddings, tokenization, all of that on the whole Wikipedia, not just coronavirus that we're interested in. And then afterwards, that's why the rest of the teams had trouble using whatever, like those spacey vectors, like everything Brandon did, uh, because they were kind of like, oh, it doesn't produce the results well. Why is that? Because we get noise from like first step, right? So this is one piece that we need to essentially do this shift. We need to figure out core 19, what is the good training set for us. Now we start doing our pipelines and uh, and then tr start building this metrics of of performance, right? How good we are, et cetera. And there are, uh, so good news. So from one end, we will have much less training sets. So less computational power is needed. Bad news, less data, you know, less training capability. But again, another good news. I spoke with Sergei Kalesnikov, uh, the site or something like the, the Slack name. So he told me that so he's coming from uh, so his background is he was top two top three uh, at NIPS conference in terms of some of the like bear trainings so he told me like yeah I mean there are tricks that like we'll be able to push this last mile even with small data set and with small like verification data set etc so I don't see any kind of like this big red flags of narrowing down the data set to a much smaller one so that's why again this one thing like we need to reduce the noise and just pure this machine learning perspective and now secondly this kind of to my comments Lukash, like a couple of days before is we just need slightly better housekeeping for for agenda for example i totally missed that yesterday was like jeremy presentation etc but uh, like to my kind of noise remark in terms of within our channel this is what i kind of like see uh, we're still figuring out this fundamental layers of how we build machine learning, NLP, all of that infrastructure. And again, right now with Slava present, our infrastructure and, you know, the moment we discuss Indra or something, the next day we already have up and running instance. We just need to now learn, use it, upload data, yada, yada. So I think infrastructure, we're in a really good spot. Now we after this validation from the AI2 that guys, we just provide the Wikipedia, now you do with it what you want. I think we need to revisit like how we apply that. So we go back to kind of, okay, let's clean up the data set and now start building our pipelines. And uh, since we're essentially in the terms of like Maslow pyramid of needs, we're in this base level at this. So base level is covered. Infrastructure is kind of there. Now we need to cl clean the data a little bit now we're bumping up yet another level, but that level is still pure technical like pipelines. I'm not sure we have enough capacity at this point, for example, to pursue this, uh, whatever like Jeremy was presenting yesterday, like this cause like finding causal links because you know, we don't have clean data yet and this stream of data. So that's kind of like my, my, my position right now. Okay. So we need to kind of go back to like this, 
totally technical nerdy stuff that again we all like to do here right and we were i think from beginning like everybody wanted to kind of lay yeah, let's do this really nice beautiful like machine learning pipeline and then uh kind of make the teams use it for some users etc right that's why we were asking those inputs from like medical experts etc just to kind of have a good idea like how we will gouge the quality of our machine learning pipeline and you know like what do we do here and i think like we kind of did that but then we kind of went too much into that area not realizing that like wait a second we need to i mean we need to be grounded in a really like infrastructure reusability of code reusability of pipelines etc because we're still dealing with noisy data so that just Huge yeah, and and I, I want to elaborate a, li a little bit about noise data after. Uh, actually, AI2 uh, told us specifically that it was not idea to deliver all uh, papers about uh, coronavirus. They actually delivered everything that they found, about, uh, found, uh, found by querying uh, different databases and even not really, really relevant documents so uh, I started to look for uh, relevant papers in other databases, and I found a lot of interesting materials in, in uh, Crossref. Recently, they, they published like one, uh, 100 million and 12, or something like that, uh, publications, only metadata. But if you query this metadata on, on uh, our keywords, you actually can get really nice, uh, high quality publications. and. I started to read today a little bit, and uh, to be honest, I was really disappointed because I found a lot of things like discussed like 15 years ago, and our current situation with lockdown, and you know all these kind of things, were uh, described in, in some of papers already from Japan, for example. I already shared on on Slack, but anyway, what I, I'm going to tell uh, now we're working on infrastructure, and <laughs> we actually can enrich. Uh, Court 19 these new publications and uh, we can harvest those publications and also put in in uh, our own collection and after we can share this corpus uh, uh, this uh, AI too uh, but only uh, necessary actually to ask people to annotate all these materials that we think actually relevant to uh, coronavirus so this is our idea and now we're really busy with building infrastructure around of uh, this uh, goal i hope it's clear now what we're doing so uh, i saw a um, presentation of uh, jeremy yesterday and i think it's great idea and uh, it will fit in in our infrastructure but as one of blocks after we'll get other blocks actually ready, like database and search engine and uh, knowledge engine and this kind of stuff. So like uh, what you do, it's, it's just amazing. And we really need Indra also to get installed, to get all statements. And after we, we should push all statements in knowledge base. So we, we will definitely come to this, but not right now, because right now we don't have too much resources. And uh, yeah, also Brandon is working really hard to get a uh, fresh update uh, to Elasticsearch. So yeah, we are busy with doing other things at the moment. So in terms of uh, data cleaning, uh, do you think that uh, Elasticsearch can uh, serve uh, to this purpose as a kind of a, a filter to get the most relevant uh, docs just uh, judged by by uh, term frequency? Uh, uh, actually, I think uh, we should search only in metadata. Okay. So if you have like, uh, I don't know, like uh, coronavirus as keyword in, in keywords or uh, in, in uh, description section, it means that this is relevant and something else is not relevant. And uh, okay, because I'm not uh, completely aware of uh, this aspect of our data set, actually, there's a huge amount of papers that are completely not relevant to COVID-19. Yeah, I think okay. it's like 90%, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, because okay, it's been older than tw like November 2019, uh, probably not directly for COVID-19. So that's like a 
you know, like a time threshold to quickly determine if the paper is, you know, specifically about COVID-19. Yeah, but there are many papers, for instance, about uh, other SARS viruses as yeah, well. Yeah, but, but I mean, uh, if it's really older than November 2019, then it's probably about older coronaviruses. So we can probably just look at from November 2019 forward and then see if there's also like, it's possible it discusses COVID-19 and other coronaviruses, but the previous one, I'm not going to talk about COVID-19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it makes sense also just to filter uh, on, on a date of publication. Right. And I would say uh, from what I've seen in uh, Crossref, I think uh, they published everything until like 1st of April. So we should get a uh, really nice corpus of uh, all documents. Christine, do you know about uh, Crossref, by, by the way? Uh, no, but I, I can take a look at it if we can share that. Okay, so Crossref is basically uh, it's an organization that collecting uh, all papers uh, with uh, persistent identifier with DOIs. Okay. So uh, what they do, uh, every article in, in, in some magazine or you know, oh, old journals, uh, they can get uh, everything published in nice format and you can pro do processing and uh, some of papers actually available. Of course, not from Elsevier, and this kind of sources, but uh, uh, something we can harvest even. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has um, metadata in order, so we can search on keywords, on description, uh, on author and affiliation, this kind of stuff is filled. And uh, from what I already did, uh, I managed to extract really re relevant, co um, uh, relevant papers from uh, their search engine. And I'm going to put all these papers um, in our, into our uh, Elasticsearch. And uh, we need people like, you know, annotators with domain knowledge actually to create annotations and uh, to understand if, if it's really uh, about coronavirus, yes or no. Okay. Yeah, I can, I, especially, um, uh, I think we're gonna have uh, like a formal team of annotators soon, so that will also help. Organize okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. So, is it within task ties or more no, general? No, it's more like a horizontal team because oh, um, okay. we need annotation right now, yeah. So, what kind of, Okay, so there's a couple of thoughts I, I had about what Slava was saying. And um, I guess the first one is about uh, what kind of structured knowledge we want to be able to search over. And you mentioned at first, uh, you know, all the things that already kind of come with these papers that you can get in Crossref, like the authors and the meta metadata tags and things like that. But I think one of the values that we're generating as Corona Y is that we're creating all sorts of structured knowledge from these uh, you know, from our algorithms. So we have these embeddings and we have these knowledge graphs that we've extracted or that we've, you know, that have been manually or uh, NLP extracted. And I feel like those kinds of uh, structured knowledge should also be part of the, the search engine. Maybe that's what you intended, Slava, but uh, you just didn't say that. And so I just want to make sure that that was included. No, no, no. I said about uh, knowledge base. It's, it's already installed. So we have uh, Virtuoso, if you know Virtuoso, and also GraphQL uh, backend. So, you so can, what was the first one? I'd never heard of that one. Virtuoso, it's called. Virtuoso. Virtuoso, yeah. I, I will put okay. it. If you put some, some uh, links in the Slack window, that'd be great. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll do yeah. some reading up on it. So, so uh, basically, you can run Sparkle queries and you can get access to knowledge. I think you are quite... Uh, yeah, you know how to operate uh, Sparkle, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I think it will fit in, in your uh, infrastructure as well, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, so one, one thing is, um, if you're doing Sparkle queries, you know there's the Cord19 on fire. Is that the, uh, are you guys using your own semantic web? I mean, it sounds like you're doing Sparkle queries, you've got some some kind of like RDF representation. Yeah, of, yeah, of yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, um, uh, we, we already have Mesh, so we are going to use Mesh, and I think your uh, stuff is UMLS, already- UMLS, yeah. Yeah, so, so already in there, cool. Yeah. I already see matching points, to be honest, but uh, like I already said, 
in our infrastructure, uh, your part is actually, it should come after we'll get all stuff processed in the way like we want to get everything connected. And after we'll start to produce all these triples to put in triple store and also we will use uh, Indra, I hope, because now I, I've asked for, um, yeah, there are some, some files, uh, I think these models are missing because you can get it, it's open source, uh, I mean, all Indra infrastructure, but uh, files uh, actually stored somewhere on Amazon S3, uh -oh. and it's not possible to get without people from Correct. Harvard Medical yeah. School, yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, uh, actually, uh, Charlie uh, knows those folks and was is planning to set up. Uh, you know, uh, you know, he's already kind of let us let them know about us, and so they're expecting us to contact them. The reason why he um, hadn't done it yet is because he wanted he. So th this actually comes to my second question, which is I'm really glad. Uh, uh, was it uh, Christine uh, that you're talking about this kind of group of annotators because um, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that. Is there a channel for them right now? Is there some way? No, of I think uh, they're working on it to get it more organized. So previously, just a group of people that they just work with different teams, but there's no yeah. formal organization yet. But I think we need a little bit of that. Right oh, yeah. And I forgot uh, to, to tell the uh, important thing about annotations. So basically, we are working on, on the hypothesis tool. We discussed like a few, few days ago, and it's in our uh, design document. And this tool actually allows uh, to create annotation and to export in like open standards. So yeah. you can use it for any kind of external tools also. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so after we'll get it uh, up and running in labs infrastructure, we'll share links and mm -hmm. you'll be able to try it and uh, we'll get some real documents annotated. So I think it's a good step also forward. And this uh, is something for Jeremy, I think also to consider for his uh, uh, requirements. So I, I see that you have, so I just looked up Virtuoso really quickly. So it seems mm -hmm. like it's something, uh, and, and I guess, uh, is it kind of on the same? So one thing you, sh you should probably know about is uh, there's a COVID graph, which mm -hmm. is all done in Neo4j. Um, yeah. It's also installed. It's also installed all, it's also installed all of COVID of graphs. Course. Of course. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Is there any like documentation or anything that I can uh, do to, to kind of like explore it or anything like yeah, that? It's, or? Uh, it's, in, it's in our design document, I think. Oh, okay. And yeah, there's, okay. Yeah, there's, <laughs> all right. Guys, I'll, I'll guys, 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 because yeah. we need to keep that in somehow structure. So, okay. The, 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 <laughs> sorry, no sorry, but okay. The first step we are now doing is cleaning the data. And now the question is to Slava, uh, do you need some people to do it? Like, because it's not just cleaning by, we filter out everything that is uh, older than November 2019. It's more about like uh, writing some smart scripts to like to have probably a couple of versions of filter data. Like for instance, the version that is filtered just on based on the data. The, uh, the, the version filtered by uh, additional uh, uh, features like all source metadata, etc., a, a bit more sophisticated, etc. But uh, we need people for. I mean, like we have people already, and some of them uh, asked me uh, last days uh, for some tasks because it's like a bit now theoretical that we we don't produce anything uh, in terms of code. So uh, my question is. Um, uh, can we start now on a VM or like on local? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, everybody can, can get access from me. And basically, uh, after we'll put everything in, in Elasticsearch, yep. and uh, Brandon, trust me, he's working really hard to, to get this stuff imported. So uh, we will just share links and uh, scripts, how to query it. And uh, we need to uh, create different collections and after to um, like to, to um, develop smart process to match those collections and to define more or less relevant documents. And after this manual evaluation and annotation, we'll get really high quality. Nice. Content. Okay. So, and yeah. Additional question in terms of structure of data, because uh, uh, we uh, like it's already an, a kind of agreement uh, among us. We want to have three layers of uh, data. So sentences, uh, whole uh, sections, and hold papers so that the granularity of the data is on the three levels. Do we have that already uh, in our data on VM? 
or not? On which level are data that Brandon is now processing? Okay, so uh, he's doing a uh, full text. Okay, full text. Input. And what I've got from Crossref is just metadata. So there is no full text. Okay. And okay. if you'll think that it's useful exercise and anyway, we need to do something for uh, Aryan Institute. So we can, we can probably uh, harvest all, all um, yeah, available publications that seems to be relevant and also we can reach the collections for next round. Yeah, but just so that, yeah, but because now we have, we're going in a couple of, of directions at the same time in the sense we try to filter our data, enhance with the new data, and still we need, we want to keep this uh, three layer uh, structure in the sense that when you, uh, when you filter or when you uh, put in your search query, you can get results, hits on the level of sentences, on the level of sections, yeah. on the level of uh, whole papers. Yeah, it's all, it's all covered basically by Brandon already. Okay, good. And then, okay, this is the last question for today. Okay, maybe uh, Brandon is, uh, who's, uh, who, who was working with us uh, on embeddings? Because then for each of those three layers, we need also embedding like some vectors. And the question is, of course, uh, we have those uh, embeddings from Spacey, but there are also uh, some discussion on uh, embeddings from BART model for sentences, for whole sections. Is it, I think I, I need to talk with Brandon about it or with Sergei Kalashnikov. I think so, I think I think so. yeah, he, he does something. He, he yeah. showed some visualizations, so. I think he's working on it all at the moment. Okay, cool. No, just, just, there are some a very big dots that now are question marks and I want to change them to dots and connect to each other uh, so that uh, we have a picture, a bigger picture. Okay, there are some questions for sure. No? I have just I have one, I guess. Okay, cool. Yeah, go ahead. I was going through the documentation, the documented here footer, and I found that the Indra lab for the coronavirus group was it working or it is closed right now? Uh, so, sorry, I, I, I cannot hear you well. Uh, the, uh, what was working? The Indra lab of our labs dot coronavirus, is it uh, up or is it uh, not been put up till yet? Because I found I was browsing through it and I found it was. It, it, it mentioned that it was not available in the server right now. I guess the question is like, is labs that coronavirus.org is like up and running that website? Uh, uh, exactly. Right. Okay. So that website is, I forgot who did it, Jeremy, I think. Uh, so it's, no, 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 it's, it's not what Slav is. Uh, I think it's a Justin. Which website? Uh, Justin. So uh, oh, Justin. Justin Eder created a uh, like prototype for front end where you can filter something out and you, you can do some things. And currently um, he's changing um, uh, these to Docker to, to get it in more like standardized way and uh, to get it up and running in our infrastructure. And before it was just a test to run on, on port from uh, basically Ubuntu operating system. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, next question. So I have one small yeah, sure. like, yeah. kind of a remark. So regarding to your Yilakash point in terms of, oh, it looks like we have two separate things. We want to add data, but at the same time filter one. Yeah. So to elaborate on that, I see it as like one task, like one track. What, again, Core 19 is a whole Wikipedia, right? Now we want to add to that Wikipedia articles about like related to uh, COVID-19, but at the same time, we want to get away from all of the like physics uh, articles, et cetera. So that's why it's kind of like contradictory actions, but yeah, the I whole should... point is to, f to focus on that one. Yeah, that's... I mean like, yeah, I, 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 I didn't mean that in the way that uh, they are contradict contradict contradictory but in the sense that are they can be seen as separate but they are not of course because one one nice data set with maybe multiple clusters etc but still it's like two different things like cleaning in the sense that eliminating thing and putting new thing 
and uh, yes. that's that that was my point um i don't i mean i think what uh anton was saying was that the act of quote cleaning is simply annotating as this is not relevant to corner wide but you could still search it right you're not actually getting rid of it yeah i mean okay that that's what i think it's it was already clean that we want to have a couple of versions of those clean uh, data we can clean on data like everything older than uh, november 2019 uh, goes away uh, or cleaned a bit more sophisticated uh, because um, it was a proposal by christine right that oh i think there's still value to keep them i think we should just annotate um uh, whether ah, okay. it's our copy yeah yeah so, so yeah a user quickly wondered. chime in we're all data scientists here we don't throw data away right yeah. we never throw data away <laughs> it just again like the moment when you say hmm, let me train this like bart for for really COVID-19 specific stuff. At this point in time in your head, you need to filter out the noise. All right, this is what I mean, like, okay, we need to get rid of that one, add more data, like, you know, amplify it and so on. But yeah, in reality, we still keep all of that. We just need to know what is for what, right? The moment I want to train Barton physics articles, I will go and I will search and filter out my whole Wikipedia dump for, you know, physics articles. It just, what I were observing before, not within what we were, how we were approaching things, but everybody else, they simply think like, oh, court 19, these are all relevant papers. Let me build a visualization or query engine for it. Okay, you just did it. And now when I'm like putting something, it, it shows me effect of coronavirus on dogs. I'm like, okay, that's relevant, right? And that's why uh, um, this is becomes like really hard for what Jeremy is proposing, like that type of project. Like we want to find causal links in the data. Okay, for that task, we need you need to be at the point of, okay, here is my really nice collection of COVID-19 or at least coronavirus on humans. Then those causal links will you know make sense. Otherwise, you're just building like causality in the noise, right? That's just kind of like the, the whole uh, uh, kind of questions over here. What causal links and in, in what are you looking for? And I think we, again, just goes back to my first point during this call is we're not ready yet to, to, to play with causal links in this noisy data. Okay, is that, so, maybe just uh, because in terms of biology, I'm uh, highly illiterate, but I think that relationship between uh, COVID-19 and animals can be very important. I mean, like, come on, if COVID-19 can be carried by by animals, it's like... Yeah, but for example, like we know that COVID-19 is not from dogs, for example. So at least we need to figure out, like, to filter out dogs, but leave, like, bats, you know, whatever is yeah. actually relevant. And we don't know what is relevant. That's why, again, we need annotation, all of that stuff. And again, if you start thinking about, okay, let's annotate everything. Can we annotate the whole 40,000 papers? No. That's why, again, we could probably come up with some filter pipeline. So we have a corpus of, let's say, 1,000 papers that we could annotate really, really good. And now that data set, again, we push back to Allen Institute of AI, other parties in this whole ecosystem, so they could, again, tweak, add, and so on. So at least this is how I, I see like path forward. We just need to, like, we want to get really good annotated data set. 40,000 papers is impossible to annotate nicely. Smaller one, yes. And smaller, like this more clean data set will be beneficial for our embeddings, tokenizers, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So uh, I just had a quick uh, comment. I said, rather than thinking of the core 19 as noisy data, we should think of it as unstructured, right? And so the question is what kinds, and if we're going to, so we're trying to structure it as much as possible using NLP and, and you know, by bringing additional sources. Uh, and and all and the, the question is, we, if we think of manual annotation as a resource, it's a very limited, expensive resource, then what is the, uh, what specific manually annotated structure would give us the most return on our curation? And that, that's a question I'm asking uh, Slava, I'm asking Anton, I'm asking folks who are like, really want to utilize curation. And so I really want them to be very specific about what it is that you would get, like what, what would they, what kind of value would, um, 
would uh, applying curators to the data I give you? Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, uh, let, let me uh, answer uh, this question. So first of all, we want to actually verify all, all statements that will be produced by Indra and probably other engines. So they'll get, in, in this annotation tool, they'll get a list of statements and they should respond yes or no, according to what they read, right? And also we want kind of uh, extra metadata. So if there is some new information about COVID-19, which is not covered by what we already extracted, because we'll get also uh, entities and this kind of stuff, stuff as part of annotation. So they should put it. So they should basically create new uh, metadata for uh, specific public specific paper. Okay, guys, because we are slowly running uh, out of time, this discussion I think is very important because now we are slowly merging. Uh, I mean, that's what uh, Slava and Brandon uh, has been work uh, have been working on. So this kind of filtering NLP uh, database. Uh, part of the pipeline and that what uh, is, is is being done by Jeremy namely those whole uh, entity relation uh, story now we are slowly converging to the some uh, common point in the sense that uh, we are we are we are trying to start to see some final point how we can uh, combine the, uh, those two stories together we can uh, continue on slack about it and we can have uh, this discussion uh, further uh, tomorrow over tomorrow depending on your abilities and but it's it's good point that slowly we start to see a common goal in terms of uh, a general picture maybe not precisely what the kind of code or, or li library we're going to specifically use but still something that uh, this mutual goal that that uh, and and maybe because it's also quite difficult to say what the annotators and correct curators and the users uh, will want to see like, this is a different question but at least uh, we, we we start we are starting to see uh, some common uh, goal where we can something propose together. Yeah. Okay. So, Lucas, just sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I think our final goal is just to get really clean triples statements. And this is some, it's our fuel basically. This is how we, we can run uh, engine on yeah. this fuel, right? So okay. just sorry to interrupt you. No, no, so it's a, it's a good point because I, I, I tried to put it there more like philosophically and f you put it very technically, but right. I mean, like that's what we want. Just some meaningful relationships between drugs, uh, objects, uh, phenomena, and that's it. That's our job. And uh, let's see. Okay, you're right uh, on technical level. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to uh, upload everything now on YouTube, and I'm uh, going to write some sketches uh, for the. Uh, next steps and uh, so that we can discuss it uh, this in some uh, more technical way okay thank you very much and have a good night or good day depending on your time zone bye i said